We're also starting to see greenwashing coming up in a corporate context. We're starting to see it coming up in all sorts of corporate branding um, and in all sorts of ways that corporates describe their net zero journey um, to the market, both to their consumer market, but also increasingly to their investor market, um, to their shareholder market. Um, and then also we see, starting to see new and innovative ways in which activists are seeking to hold corporates to the sorts of claims that they make and are seeking to enforce their own version of what a net zero journey should look like onto these corporates. I think that us in South Africa are, are going to face a particularly interesting climate in all of this. We sort of sit between the sort of developed world where targets and timetables are very firmly part of their legal regime. In the South African context, it's always, you know, we are fundamentally lawyers. We need to also bring ourselves back to the black letter law and understand both how that black letter law regulates, but then, as I say, in this context, how principles actually start to become um, binding um, in a legal interpretive context. So the main um, law that we have to regulate this area is, in fact, the Consumer Protection Act. Um, the Consumer Protection Act, now we are again in a product context, although from a Consumer Protection Act context, any interaction that a company has with consumers could potentially um, be a context where there could be challenge. So if you are making branding claims generally, as well as particular product claims, there could be a Consumer Protection Act angle. So the fundamental principle in the Consumer Protection Act is not a greenwashing or a sustainability principle at all. It's simply the general principle that a person must not knowingly apply to any goods a trade description that is likely to mislead the consumer as to any matter expressed or implied. A very interesting part of the Consumer Protection Act is that they specifically require that international law and international precedent be used in consumer protection interpretation in applying the Consumer Protection Act. So that means that this is an area where we can see quite quickly the possibility of, you know, international developments of, you know, sort of uh, thinking from developing countries around sustainability being used quite specifically in applying what um, a, a misleading claim might be. Fundamentally, though, the Consumer Protection Act and the regulatory mechanisms under it are not really all that effective, if we can say that. Um, it's not an area where um, we see a lot of um, action. There aren't really any laws around sustainability, around green claims in South Africa. What they are, though, are a series of voluntary standards, in other words, sand standards that have not been incorporated into legislation. But those standards then do start to become the sort of reasonable measure of action when you want to demonstrate that you have not sought to mislead. Being able to rely on a voluntary standard is a very strong and effective way of showing that you have not in fact been misleading because you have complied with generally accepted principles as per the standard. But also importantly, from a... Um, Standards Act perspective, some of these standards have by now been incorporated into law, albeit obliquely. So some of these um, labeling, environmental labeling standards have been incorporated into the extended um, producer responsibility regulations under the Waste Act. And so packaging, which is regulated under that regime, is required over time to have labelling that conforms to these voluntary standards because that obviously facilitates return, it facilitates standardisation. So it is important to understand that, th that definitely these standards are becoming the norm and are becoming incorporated. We are definitely seeing a rise in all sorts of different contexts of greenwashing litigation. What we see from an activist perspective is a lot of the time those claims are not necessarily seeking damages. They may be just seeking to um, change corporate behaviour, they're seeking in a similar way to the advertising regulation to get you to withdraw your claims, to adapt your claims. But we are also seeing activist groups who are trying to work out what is the loss, what is the harm, what is the damage that they can claim. We obviously all are sort of thinking about, in the South African context, particularly intergenerational equity. You know, can we sort of be 
be claiming that a fossil fuel investment today causes actual harm to future generations? Um, is there a, a quantification that could start to be made around um, that type of thing?